Okay, hi guys. So this is the Morningstar website and you can uh, pay for the premium subscription and you can see that uh, these are the things that you're going to get, all right? The information, the full analysis, what they think of the company. And I can, I can tell you that it's pretty uh, unbiased because they are uh, paid subscription. They do not need to meet the management and they can just put a buy or sell. They are not backed by investment banks. So the companies that they analyze are not their customers anyway. So they can put a, a, buy, a sell call or buy call as and when without any implications, right? So I think this is more of the best uh, research that's been around and I read their, their analysis pretty carefully. Now, over here, you can see a fair value, 3,500. And the last close is 3116. So what does that tell you? It's a good time to buy, right? Stewardship is exemplary, economic mode wide and stable. They are not being eroded. So you can read uh, the contents of all this. Now, you get to, for premium subscription, you get to see the, uh, in a snapshot, the PE ratios, right? Competitors. Okay, Boo and Bears, what a summary of what they say. We've got the news. And I like this a lot. Price is fair value. Guys, take a look at this. Okay. Now, you can see that the fair value keeps going up, right? And there are periods where the, the price is above the fair value. And there are periods where the price is below the fair value. You can see these periods here are probably strong buys. Okay. Fair value at 2003, 2017, 18, 19, and the price is about uh, 1008. Pretty good, about 20% upside, right? And and it surpassed the fair value for a while, and then now it's on the, again, below the fair value, right? It's about 10% to 12, 12% below the fair value. <clears throat> there were periods where it's high. Now, um, If I like the company like Amazon and I've owned some shares and none of my, the shares should be more than 4% of my portfolio, especially when they already have earnings, okay? So when we talk about more speculative companies that pre earnings like Tesla, it's only 2% of my portfolio and venture cap type of companies account for about 20% max. The rest uh, probably things like Amazon is already profitable. It will probably be uh, uh, more like a, you know, 4% max of the portfolio because it's already uh, proven it has earnings. So what I do is this, if I own something that is already uh, accounts for 4% of my portfolio, as long as it's above this portion here, right, the fair value example here, I will be taking some profit. I will not sell all. I'll probably sell a quarter or I'll sell a uh, half. I will also do technical analysis, like during this part, if it's above fair value, and uh, take for example at 201, early 14, uh, fair value 375, high 408, and I will cross check with the charts. And if the charts show that it's overstretched way above the 50 day moving average, I may actually sell half. This is how I make my analysis. So right now, um, I, there's still room for me to increase my holdings in Amazon. So this is, um, I would say I'll add on value because Amazon is probably only about 2% of my portfolio. So I'll add another 2%. And preferably the, the stock must be near at least the 50 days or the 150 days for the average. There must be a pullback. So that's why I'm going window shopping during correction. And that is why corrections are a very happy time for me. You know, so I do not fear corrections at all. I go shopping for good companies. Um, anything else to look at? No. Um, trailing returns, not really. You can see the 15 year performance has been 33% a year. Fantastic returns, man. Uh, 
financials, if you want to build your own discounted cash flow uh, value, you, you know, the beauty of it is to look at things like income statements, you can go and look at it. Okay. Can stretch them over to 2020. Um, balance sheet, cash flow, export it to Excel. No? So if you're going to be your own discounted cash flow model, it, it can be done that way. Um, valuation. Um, don't really look at PE because if you look at PE, it's going to be you end up with old stocks that hardly grow. That's why the PE ratio is low, right? So you look at you don't even look at EV if it done nowadays, you know, unless you you have to have there must be an element of growth in it. And PEG ratio might be good, but it doesn't really do you justice, right? I mean it's a straight line P15, PEG is 10, hey, it's, it's 1.5, so it's overvalued. But I mean, there are stages of the growth model. First five years, after that, it goes to a steady state. You know, I don't think it's uh, PEG is good enough. So a lot of this is subjective. That's why value and momentum is very important. Uh, look at ROE, 24%. Uh, very important to look at ROE. ROE is very close to growth. The higher the ROE, the likelihood, the, the, the more the growth is likely to be. 25% ROE is good likely to grow at that level. Um, dividends, and, you know, not paid any dividends. Ownership, I think they're all owned by funds and ETFs at this stage. Uh, I don't think Jeff Bezos has uh, huge holdings, right? It's pretty, 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 uh, Diversified, right? Um, okay, and you can even check are the, the investors buying or selling? Okay, the insiders, the major shareholders, are they significant ones at least? Are they buying or are they selling? Um, that's it. I guess that you can look at the top executives, um, Jeff Bezos. How many shares he owns? He hasn't sold much. Okay. Still a large holding. Still a large holding of it. Board of Directors. And then Transaction History. Any of the directors have sold. Um, acquisition. Okay, most, there hasn't been much of a sale until 24th August. Um, I, uh, Jeff Bezos has, himself hasn't sold anything. So there you go. This is how I look at it. And, you know, you can you it's only 100 plus us dollars 130 dollars us a year and for 10 us you get to get all this information make your decisions on based on this i think it's quite quite uh, uh commendable it's quite value for money right so uh, i i will recommend this for my stock picks so lastly uh, this is just financial education right i don't mean to it's not financial advice uh, just share with you what uh, I would personally do and hope that you learn something from it and then please do your own due, due diligence when you invest, yeah? And so over and out, thank you for watching this. Hope it's uh, useful.